Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today we're going to talk about a topic that's long overdue in my opinion. Uh, we're going to talk about the works of my all-time favorite cartoonist. If you know me, you know I love Peter Bagg and I love his comic Hate. Uh, but if Hate is all you know about Peter Bagg, or heck, if you don't know anything about the works of Peter Bagg, uh, well, then you're in for a treat today. We're going to talk about his three latest works, which could not be further on the comic spectrum subject matter-wise from Hate, I think. We're going to talk about uh, Woman Rebel, the Margaret Sanger story, Fire, the Zora Neale Hurston story, and Credo, the Rose Wilder Lane story. Three books about three amazing women by my favorite cartoonist. Today on Comic Book News, let's look at the works of Peter Bagg. Hey, welcome back to the show. Today, uh, we're going to talk about the works of Peter Bagg. He's done some really interesting comics. I don't think there's a single cartoonist who has a more um, broad and diverse uh, range of types of comics, and particularly uh, of the different publishers who've published his work. Um, so let's just briefly talk about that for a second. Um, these were uh, books, uh, Credo, Fire, and Woman Rebel, are all published by Drawn and Quarterly, a great small publisher of uh, amazing art comics. They put out many, many books over the years. I suggest that you check them out and check out the books that they have. Um, if you know Peter Bagg well, you might know him from Hate, published by Fantagraphics, maybe the premier publisher of art comics, certainly in the United States. Um, but man, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, as I researched this story uh, a little bit more, I went back through my own collection of Peter Bagg comics and just was blown away. Even though I bought them all as they came out, I was like, wow, he's been published by everybody. You don't believe me? Let's look at all of the major publishers of comics. Let's start with, um, well, more from Fantagraphics. More recently, Bagg has been known for doing stuff for Reason Magazine. Right, He does these sort of um, journalistic comics. He'll go to an event and cover it from a libertarian angle um, and do it as a as a comic, a comic strip published in Reason Magazine and online. You can go online and check these things out. They're great. There was a collection of them by uh, Fantagraphics. Everybody is stupid except for me. Uh, a, a decade's worth of cartoons report, cartoon reporting for Reason Magazine. Um, if you're into libertarianism or politics and want to get it in a way into it in a way that's not like preachy, ham fisted, hitting you over the head, and moralizing, but just talking it talking about it from a common sense day-to-day -day perspective you want to read this book uh the megalomaniacal spider-man very interesting stuff uh published by marvel comics and their startling stories line back when they had such a thing back when they took like real risks and chances and cared about the creative quality they were hiring the best of the best indie comics creators and just letting them go loose on spider-man because why the heck not um, we'll look at this book uh, a little bit later in the Million Dollar Comics Cam as well, just as a little bonus. Um, the Incorrigible Hulk, another similar work. Now, these books are incredibly funny and, and drawn completely and written by Bag. This is like he's a cartoonist. He's not a comic artist for hire. He's a cartoonist. So each of these is told you know, um, from his perspective and in, in his inimitable style. Did you know that... Peter Bagg was the editor of Weirdo after R. Crumb. He took over at, I believe, issue nine and published the next, uh, about did about 10 or 11 issues, I think. I think this was one of his first. Um, if you've never read Weirdo before, you're missing out. It's an incredible anthology edited by Robert Crumb. Usually has a Crumb cover on it. Um, it was covered this year. There was a book put out called The Book of Weirdo that covers all the amazing underground and independent type artists that worked on weirdo and the history of it told in depth i don't have this book yet but it's on my list to pick up and talk about maybe on the show okay let's look at dc comics well he did graph original graphic novels for vertigo this was oh okay not my favorite bag work but just interesting to see him out there doing an ogn format for a publisher like vertigo dc um he also put out a, a, a series that was a parody of the comic strip and comics publishing world called Sweatshop. If you love comics like from the inside, you want an inside baseball co type comics thing and you like, I don't know, the old world of comic strips and stuff, you want to check out Sweatshop. 
um, Apocalypse Nerd, another mini for a publisher for Dark Horse. Okay, so this was sort of a... Uh, uh, it was another one of those ones that not my favorite bag work, but even my least favorite bag work is is worth picking up and reading, frankly. Um, oh man, collaborations. How about this story that written by Alan Moore, drawn by Peter Bag, uh, in the style of a Kool-Aid man meets Allen Ginsberg's Howl, the hasty smear of my smile. You can find this. It's collected in a couple places. Um, I'll try to put a link down below of, of where you might find this but um it's worth reading and fun only to see you know my all-time favorite writer of comics writing with my all-time favorite cartoonist is like ah this is a delicious treat for dan shaheen speaking of delicious treats and collaborations peter bag worked with gilbert hernandez and they put out an all ages comic aimed at girls about an outer space girl rock band called yeah you want to talk about Diverse Reason Magazine to hate to biographies to all ages kids comics? What? I mean, what else? What could be wackier? Well, how about the Bat Boy comic strip that was published in the Weekly World News? You can get a collection of this. And uh, it was put out in the Weekly World News, the one you know about with all the crazy stories. And uh, it just goes to show you the work of Peter Bag is amazing. So, you're like some people and you only know Peter Bag from hate and you like hate and you hate everything else, you're missing out. You need to give it a chance. Uh, but wait, why are we talking about Peter Bag comics when we could be looking at them in the Million Dollar Comics can? Yeah, Million Dollar Comics can. Let's look at um, Woman Rebel, Fire, and Credo. I'm, obviously, I'm not going to go through every page of all of these. I'm going to talk a little bit about what they are um, of them all the first one is the both the subject matter I was most familiar with and it's probably my favorite of the three women rebel the Margaret Sanger story um, Margaret Sanger is the, one of the founders of Planned Parenthood I found it a fascinating story there's a lot of misconceptions about her and about um, uh, you know what she was all about well, I, the most mind blowing thing I found was that you know she was the founder, of, one of the founders of Planned Parenthood, but um, was not a proponent of abortion. I, that blew me away. It was very interesting. Um, just proof positive that that's not what Planned Parenthood really is necessarily all about. She was about freeing women from the bondage of pregnancy by through birth control. She invented the term birth control and she pioneered uh, research into preventing pregnancy to stop women from suffering because back then it wasn't about them having a career or whatever it was about them living through childbirth it was about them um, just being able to have a life at all and uh, so she um, her work was really important Zora Neale Hurston is somebody I was not that familiar with uh, really familiar with at all but I found it a really interesting story she was uh, an African American writer in the 30s um, who was sort of overlooked in her day but discovered later um, after her death and um, uh, really was very influential in um, uh, talking about uh, was very different than those in her time because she rejected communism which a lot of other um, uh, leaders of that movement were, uh, were, were pro and she was anti and uh, through, because of personal experiences detailed somewhat in the book um, she was just an interesting uh, kind of a character and a, a, a great writer and wrote about interesting stuff. And, you know, uh, struggled obviously with freedom, not just as a woman, but a woman of color in the 30s. W was able to make a career as a successful, somewhat successful financially as a writer and support herself and do the things that she wanted to do and talk about things she wanted to talk about. It's a great story. And then Credo, the Rose Wilder Lane story. She was sort of the unbilled co-creator of um, Little House on the Prairie, and uh, her writings were extremely influential in the founding of libertarianism. Now let's talk for a second about libertarianism, because it's sort of misunderstood and it's a dirty word to some people. Um, I think these books are a great inroad into learning about you know some of the ideas behind libertarianism because one. They are not hitting you over the head with those. That's not the purpose of these books, is to tell the story of these women. It just so happens that the, these women were severely constrained in their freedoms and thus developed an attitude that was um, uh, 
encouraged freedom, right? Wanted freedom and, and, and um, wrote about it and strove politically to achieve it. Now, interestingly enough, these, the style of these books, um, you know, Peter Bagg's style can, can be described as wacky, right? What else are you going to call it but wacky? I'm going to zoom do a million dollar zoom in here. Um, you know, the, the gesticulations, the craziness, people, people are nutty. Um, but it's, it's interesting because with subject matter that could be considered somewhat dry, like a historical biography to fit in with his crazy style. Uh, it, it just makes it more fun and readable to me anyway. It's beautiful to look at. And, but the emotion while it's over the top reads through cartooning, it just, it makes it very readable, unmistakable what those emotions are. Um, I mentioned that, uh, bag edited weirdo and let's see Robert Crumb said of Peter bag, um, said a great, uh, crumb calls bag, a great storyteller. One of the best. I always say there's two kinds of cartoonists. There's literary cartoonists and there's visual cartoonists. He's definitely a literary cartoonist. He's a storyteller. His work is all about the stories. And this is from an interview with Robert Crumb in the latest uh, comic book creator magazine. Just an awesome uh, resource. In fact, there was an entire issue of this devoted to Bag uh, that you should pick up. And uh, you know, I read it and it informed this uh, video quite a bit. But I've just been a you know a lifelong fan since high school of Bag. Now his style, as wacky as it seems, you know, and as loosey goosey or whatever you want to call it as it seems, his style is meticulous. These books each tell a story of a different important woman, important to libertarianism, told in this signature style of bag. Um that that frankly is amazing. I was talking about comic book creator magazine, and it's worth picking up that issue. Um I'm not going to go fully into these books because uh, I'm not I'm not going to do like a, a, a recap or anything like that like I might of a, of a comic. Um, but I'll bring in as a little bonus here, I brought a copy of Megalomaniacal Spider-Man for you Spidey fans as well. I know my demographic here. Uh, so we're going to take a quick look at, at this full color, written and drawn by bag in his unmistakable signature style, right? His style is amazing. It's like nobody else. It's, you know, Big Daddy Roth meets, oh, I don't know, Cartoons Magazine meets a little bit of Harvey comics maybe thrown in there. Um, I'm lucky enough to own several original pages by bag. I bought a bunch of them directly from him maybe close to 10 years ago and, uh, I bought this one recently in an auction. This is from one of the last stories in the Bradleys in the, the neat stuff era of bag before he transitioned to hate, before he realized that Buddy was his like his signature character and became um, the star of hate. And I, I just wanna talk about hate briefly. This review obviously is not about hate, but this is Bag's best known work. And if you've never read any Bag, this is what I'm going to recommend you start with because it's probably the most accessible. It's the most funny. Uh, it's the most fun and interesting. It's Bag's a great storyteller. His characters are amazing. Um, the humor here, Seattle during the grunge era is right on, era rather, is right on point. Uh, he was there at Ground Zero in Seattle when all that wackiness was happening in the 90s. And was putting out comics that I was reading in high school and really, really loved. Uh, so um, I definitely going to recommend this one for, for everybody. So uh, Peter Bag, Guy's amazing. Guy's my favorite. There is no better cartoonist working today. I know that there's nobody uh, published by a broader array of uh, publishers of the best publishers, the premier publishers in the industry, all want Peter Bag. He's guys work with Robert Crumb. In my opinion, he's the heir apparent to Robert Crumb, but even took it in a it took it to that next level in many ways. I mean, uh, in the sense that the subject matter is so broad and accessible, and not as I mean, there's stuff that could be considered offensive, but nothing on the level uh, that uh, that Crumb's work. 
uh, might merit a mention of, right? So um, go pick up Peter Bag, anything. Go pick up Hate. Go pick up Buddy Does Seattle and start there. Um, if, if you don't care about that, but you are more interested in libertarianism or um, in the lives of these the three ladies in the books that we reviewed, today I want you to pick up Fire, Credo, uh, or if nothing else, pick up Woman Rebel, the Margaret Sanger story. I found it super fascinating, eminently readable, um, and uh, even fun and funny in some places. Great research in the back. There's footnotes of basically every single page, you know, where his research came from. Meticulously researched and documented. Um, you want to read this book. Peter Bag's the best. But you know who else is the best? You are. If you're uh, watching this video, then you love comics like I do. And I want to thank you for watching. Please, if you haven't already, take a moment and hit that subscribe button. Um, that'll get you... Uh, a subscription to my videos and our subscriber count will go up and up we're trying to get to that magic number 1000 if you want to see my videos as they come out click that little bell and click I want all notifications and you can be notified whenever we drop a new comic book story here on comic book news um, thank you for your comments I want to hear what you have to say about Peter Bag, about comics about our new format in general um, their videos are gonna be a little bit longer maybe uh, a, a, I'm going to ramble a little bit more, but uh, we're going to see how that works out. So thank you for your comments. I've got uh, some of the best regular watchers and commenters on YouTube here talking about comics. So leave one of those. Thank you for doing that. But most of all, hey, just thanks for watching. See you next time.